The one thing I noticed at the show that shocked me, I, I think will surprise you. Have you filmed the Desatels cases yet? Not yet. When so you we're go just around starting and you go yeah. to the competitive cases and yes. you film the Desatels case, yes. the first thing that comes to a lot of people's mind is, wow, what an amazing group of minerals, say, in the Spams case. Yes. When I walked by that case yesterday morning, the first thing that came to my mind was, oh my God, two years in a row, last year with Mark Wiles' case and this year with the Spans, which is certainly a contender, whether yes. it wins or not. Yes. Two years in a row, customers who came into this hobby through the internet within the last five years have grown enough that they're competing for decitels at the Tucson show. In that short period of yeah. time. If that's not a proof of the power of the internet to exactly. expand and grow the hobby, I don't know what is, because normally it would take 20, 30 years that is correct. for a customer to learn enough, get connected enough, be, be able to access enough pieces. Yeah. It's called communications path. in a very fast me uh, method. Right, so the yeah. internet's made, made everything so much more transparent, efficient, uh, that just the growth of, of collectors has, I think, been accelerated. So two years in a row, you have people who've entered the hobby and come to Des Hotels level competition. It's fantastic. At the main show yeah. because of the internet. Hey, this is Jim Span, Gail Span, and they both uh, won the Des Hotels trophy for the best large mineral specimens worldwide at the 2008 Tucson Gem and Mineral Show here in Tucson. So we need to put this on what's hot in Tucson, and this thing is a very hot case of minerals. When you walk by it, it's extraordinary beautiful minerals being displayed. It's made a big hit with everybody. Uh, it's hard to get around your case because so many people are looking at it. But anyway, while we do want to put it on tape, and we are going to hit it sometime today to put it on our What's Hot in Tucson. But anyway, for the both of you, congratulations proud of you and you haven't been in the hobby that long what five long. six years three, or? Years. three years three years it's incredible you were originally uh, uh, notified of minerals by the internet can you just tell me a, a little bit what caught your eye did you know anything about minerals were you mineral collectors or do you just saw pretty things on the internet you saw rocks on the internet how were well, you well i went to the houston museum and i saw a san francisco mine wolf and i okay and i wrote down the name because i couldn't believe it was so beautiful and when we got home I googled Wolfenite and I told Jim you can buy this stuff and oh. we did. Ever since. <laughs> That's fa and that was just three years ago. That's right. Three years ago. That's we fantastic. Buying on the internet, uh, we found uh, Dan Weinrich's site and Rob Levinsky's Rob site and, uh, and several others and, and found some fabulous uh, pieces that way and through that it got us to going to some of the galleries uh, that were offering uh, fine minerals and that brought us to Tucson here for the first time two years ago. That's fantastic. And, and we had a chance to get to know the people and more of the dealers and certainly learn from some fabulous uh, collectors here and, and being from Dallas and part of the uh, uh, MAD group, the Mineralogical Association of Dallas has been spectacular for us. Very We've had so. some great collections to see in the Dallas area and some fabulous mentors to help uh, teach us what's, what's a good mineral and what's a, what's a not so hot mineral. That's so important, Jim. Jim just pointed out what you just heard on this uh, DVD, that it's so important for any collector getting into the hobby to expose themselves to the minerals and themselves to uh, educate themselves, especially being new. We've made a point of trying to have uh, our display cases and the minerals in our home uh, available to many of our friends and associates mm -hmm. so that as uh, people come who have not been exposed to minerals right. before, it's, it's like walking into the museum for the first time and That's it's right. amazing how many people have fallen in love with mineral collecting as a result of seeing our collection as We're well. both fantastic. so passionate. That's, That's fantastic. fantastic. Well, congratulations. So Appreciate, it. Appreciate it. You guys have Thank done you, a sir. great job. Thank you very much. Keep Thank up you. the good work and you. see you at the show walking around and we want to go over to your case and we're going to Wonderful. put it on the DVD. Right. Yeah, you. congratulations. Thank you. What we have here is a case of minerals that won the Desatels Trophy. Paul Desatels was the curator of the Smithsonian Institution. Every year they give this trophy away as the best general collection exhibited in the larger size specimens. And what we have here is a collection won by Gail and Jim Spann.
And what's so wonderful about it is that they've only been in the hobby for three years. They got wind of the hobby through the internet, of all things. And it, they really got excited about it. They had the means to put this collection together in three years. They've worked diligently on it. But if we can come in and just kind of highlight some of the key pieces in here, everyone's a lovely piece. And um, they just have one extraordinary thing after another. So what I'd like to do is zero in on uh, Okay, the back row are generally fine, but this, these two pieces really catch my eye. You have a common coonside, but not the crystallization is exactly common, but what makes it super fine is that you have side prisms of tourmaline growing with albite with the coonside. So you have a wonderful shaped coonside crystal with the albite and the uh, uh, alba eye tourmalines growing into the spodgement. Years ago you didn't have this. It was very, very hard to get matrix kunzite, let alone be tourmaline as part of the matrix. That's a fine, fine thing. It's one of my favorites. This is a killer here. This wire silver from Freiburg, Germany. Absolutely extraordinary. It's be found a few months ago. Uh, it's from China and what makes that specimen so unusual besides the quality of the specimen is the wonderful lilac pinkish color of the scalahedron on the matrix. Okay, we have a uh, topaz. This is called Imperial Topaz from the Oro Preto uh, district of uh, Minas Gerais, Brazil. What makes it such a fine crystal, it's a large crystal, it's above average, it's very large. What makes it extra fine is that it's very gemmy. Usually the specimens of topaz that are real gemmy like this, they cut up and they find the, uh, the cut stones of this highly desirable and beautiful. To give you an example, of uh, the Medina we uh, photographed earlier. This is just a lovely one for a collection such as this. It's not too big, it's not too small, it's double terminated, it's glassy, it's beautiful color. We're not just photographing only the very best, we want to show the range. So this is a good range for this case. Then right down on the first row, we have Aquamarine from Pakistan and this is from the northern areas of uh, Pakistan, and it's with all bite matrix. And these are all beautiful terminated crystals on the matrix. Okay, what we have here is an aquamarine crystal, double terminated, on a piece of matrix with fluorite, the green, then feldspar, then a black shoral tourmaline. Very unusual specimen. It's a top, top rate miniature let alone be from Namibia. You don't get that much uh, aquamarine from that locality. Then you have up here a fine, fine, deep rose, single topaz crystal on matrix with a quartz crystal, but what makes this unusual is the size of that color of topaz on matrix from Mardan, Pakistan. Very, very difficult to get a specimen like this. And not only is it a nice crystal on Matrix, but it's got a perfect little terminated uh, clear quartz crystal right at the bottom. Super rare to get, lovely specimen. Very hard to get these because they're so desirable. Okay, the next one is most unusual. It's not only from Namibia, but it's fluorite with the Spinel Twin Formation. Personally, myself, I've never seen this before. It's absolutely a wonderful piece. Going right in where the clear area is there, you can see the S and D, it is fluorite. Very, very unusual piece. This type of epidote, which is very unusual, uh, these are known as herringbone type of epidotes. They're like a big fish skeleton. Uh, this is from Pakistan. And until the Pakistan, when they found these so many years ago, uh, prior to that, only the killers, the very best of epidote, came out of Unersalzbach to Austria. 
What makes this so fine is that it's a lighter green. You can tell it's green rather than black. And then this herringbone shape like this, I consider this a major epidote in the hobby.